on the triumph and tragedy of world class championship wrestling that you appeared on in 2007 you made mention of the wrestling world would be much different today if WCCW would have went with expanding can can you talk about maybe what you meant by that and I'm assuming you mean like expanding becoming a national promotion during that time and did you want yeah. them to expand as a talent that was there like 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 Vince did with the WWF Yes, the Bo- the Von Erich boys wanted to go. They wanted to follow the tape, right? Right. You know what I mean by follow the tape? Well, yeah, yeah, you had the syndication. Everybody else who's listening. The tapes went out. You make a tape on Friday or Saturday night, and it go out of VHS. Boom! It go to. It starts the loop going to Abilene, wherever it's going, right? Right. And wherever it got broadcast out, it went up. To some of it, and when we were on that channel thirty nine, it went all across the country. Right? Before Vince did. Right. And the boys wanted to follow the tape out and follow that up on the East Coast. Go in up there because why? Because we were strong. They had we had good coverage up there. But the old style, the old mentality of the NWA and Vitz, Fritz von Erich and uh uh Greg Gagne, not Greg, but Vern Gagne and the, the uh, people out in, you know, Memphis, and all these different places, the NWA was that you stayed in your backyard, and we have your own backyard of where your tape goes, and we have a traveling champion. And don't, you're not, don't go off into someone else's territory, right? And that's right. what they did. So that's why you had all these territories around the country, you know, from Texas to Florida to... Mobile to uh, uh, Bergani up here. You could go, you know, all those places, Georgia, right? Right. And every one of them, that's why there was all these territories, because nobody kind of jumped the fence. And, you know, just because their tape might make it into a little town somewhere, no, that was that was the other guy's territory. You didn't go there. You let him have his. Right. Well... With the thing with the with the like channel seventeen that went nationwide and channel thirty nine that went nationwide, we were nationwide before Vince was right now Vince might have been a little bit of nationwide back in the really old days when a tape actually traveled the whole country, but they never really went out that's back in the fifties but so yeah, the boys, the Von Erics wanted to go, and all of the wrestlers would have gone. Yeah, let's go. But Fritz said no. Do you think so at that? Couldn't. Well, do you think at that time that the and, and this is just me not knowing. Do you think at that time the roster that World Class had was uh, was deep enough for a, a national program like like Vince ended up doing, and would have been successful if we yeah. were looking at maybe today yeah. where it's world class instead of we were, the WWE. No. We were had we had the talent and what we didn't and what we didn't have we'd have got just like Vince. I mean, he didn't have the talent when he first went either, you know. I mean, come on. He had you know, he had started with a good crew that ran their asses off all the time. They were on the road more than they were ever home. And he wore people out. Right. Right? But yep. they just they brought in more and more and, you know, built it. And we could have done the exact same thing, right? When you yeah. got, we had the free birds down there, and pretty soon we're bringing in people and doing the little uh, ven- venues out and with people, you know, driving semis in and jumping out. And geez, I can't remember her name. She was like a manager, older woman. But anyway, point being is we were doing a lot of different stuff that was new. Right. And it was getting over, and we were having... You know, we didn't have any problem getting talent. We'd have just uh, developed it. You know, not when I say we, I'm not necessarily saying me. It was Gary Hart, basically, who was running it all at, the, at that time. And with the, when I first went in there in 1980, we wrestled like, huh, you know, three to five times a week. Well, within a year, we're we're going crazy and running a hell of a lot more and as it got more and more and more and the boys got in it just grew and grew Fritz got on 39 and pretty soon you know 
we're nationwide. Yeah. The boys wanted to go, but Fritz said no. Wow. And he, w- he wouldn't go. Well, it just, it would, it be, di- would it be different if he'd have said yes? Yeah, you bet it would have been different. Because Vince wouldn't have been the first one out there and took the whole thing. You know, there would have been more. If Vince would have tried, we'd have, they'd have been, the Von Erics and that group would have been ahead of him because we were ahead of him at that time. It was it was it was hot. I know that much as a fan. <laughs> I remember yeah. being a kid you know, watching it. Channel Seven. The, really, the 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 uh, the only competition to thirty nine was uh, uh, Channel Seventeen out of Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Right? They really went nationwide. Now Vince had a pretty good network up there in New York, and they did real well too. But quite frankly, I don't think he went as far back then as we did. But nobody was really ready to jump nationwide, right? Yeah. Tell you really who jumped nationwide first was uh, Atlanta. <clears throat> went in. I think Atlanta went first. I think Atlanta went in because I was there with my brother Scott and Ole Anderson was booking, and we were flying out of there, going all over the country. <clears throat> 